Good afternoon, guys. I'm Bridget Chandler at Athens State University. Um, today, I'm at home. It's Saturday. This is our last Saturday before our classes start on Monday. And um, I've just gotten in from one of my kids' basketball games, and it's freezing cold outside, and I'm home alone, so I thought this would be a great time to make a quick um, new introductory video for CE 520, Aligning Career and Technical Education Curriculum. So I'm just looking at the syllabus and over the assignments and uh, helping to refresh my mind and also hopefully to get you guys ready for this semester. This course was taught for the very first time last semester and I learned so much um, about designing curriculum and about curriculum development alignment by teaching the course itself. And so um, it is my hopes and goals that you all will benefit from the class as much this semester as I did last. So the course is CE 520 Aligning Career and Technical Education Curricula. And this is one of the required courses for the master's program um, in career and technical education. So allow me for just a moment to kind of paint with a broad brush and talk very broadly about career and technical education, just for a moment, and then we'll move on into the course. Um, if we think about career and technical education and put it in a silo of only thinking about what that may have looked like um, at your particular high school or community college or what you've seen in the past, then you may wonder how does this all work together? Like how does everyone, how, how could so many different areas fit into this degree? But if we look more broadly at the idea and the concept behind career and technical education, I think you will, um, you'll agree with me that really all education outside of your uh, general education, at least here in our culture and our society, is for the for the end result is for a person to obtain knowledge and skills to go to work. I mean, you know, there are some uh, degrees and some areas of study that you can pursue that maybe that is not the end goal, but most of them um, are to prepare you for a career, for employment, for um, entering the workforce, no matter what the area. So if we think about that broad perspective. Maybe that will um, help you as you're processing through this class. It helps me as I'm working with each of you who are in so many different career fields and you're going through the program. But uh, let's just, so let's keep that as our kind of definition of career and technical education, that it's really any training, any type of program or training, or it could be, that leads to um, employment. Like where if that's the end goal is to prepare you either for advancing your employment or for uh, entering the workforce at all, or for new skills in the current position that you're in. So uh, to me, that kind of covers everything. Like I can't think of a whole lot of areas that that does not encompass. So, um, so now back to the course. So aligning the curriculum, and this is one of the core courses, as I said, in the program. The other, um, and, and you'll, hopefully you, you will all see the bigger picture too as you go through the courses and, and what the design behind it and our thinking when we set up the program. But um, you're, you will take the principles and philosophies, curriculum development, or learning curriculum, organization and coordination of career tech, research applications, and um, technology for teachers. So that gives you just a good core knowledge base for, for the other courses that you will select. All right, so again, back to it. Sorry, I, I get on all these other topics and, and kind of trying to wrap it all around. I want, uh, it's, to me, the way I kind of process information is I look at the bigger, and if I can understand the bigger picture, then it makes the more specifics make sense. It makes me, uh, it causes me to be able to engage and to understand what's going on. So that is my, the way I talk, the way I think, the way I explain things, and then sometimes people are like, just tell me what I need to know. So I apologize, but I feel um, that, that it's helpful for me anyway to kind of get the bigger idea. All right, so back to the course. The course description is that this course presents current topics in career technical and adult education with application for personnel in the field. The primary emphasis will be aligning secondary and post-secondary career and technical education curricula based on a student's career pathway. Okay, so um, that's pretty specific when, when, you know, if you read it just word for word as it is. But um, it is current topics for, again, if we're thinking broadly, career and technical and adult education for application for personnel and field. So you would be a personnel in field. And so that's where these projects are gonna come in to, um, to hopefully adapt and be able to help you to see how the knowledge and uh, learning taking place in this class can be used in your field. Um, and then again, with the primary emphasis, 
kind of the the overall thought um, is that you will see how curriculum from a secondary and then to post-secondary and then out in the career field in the world of work how that can all align and how there should be some type of rhyme or reason especially when we are talking about a specific area of the workforce um, you know some examples I give there you may not can align with work so much with your particular work but again if we think of them um, in broader spectrum and broader terms that career and technical education is pretty much any way that we prepare people for work, for the job, to advance in their job. And so probably in your current work work situation, your workforce that you're in, you will you can think of examples of maybe um, new technology or new computer programs or new processes in your employment that you've had to be retooled, retrained to do your current job differently. Like, you know, we've used this computer program for 10 years and now we're going to move to this program so everyone has to go through a training process in order to do that or um, when it's just a new process and a new way of processing things in your work so there's lots of examples of ways that you probably have experienced yourself with um, some type of training in your current position but if you will if we can think about like okay curriculum and, and what does this look like when we start in career and technical education, more the, the more narrow spectrum of the term, then we do start in secondary education, and um, we have programs that articulate into post-secondary, and then out into the world of work. And so post-secondary is anything past high school graduation. So it may be that a student attends two years at a community college, they may have a, a short-term training program offered at a community college, or they may even continue on into graduate school and beyond and with like beyond formal education training once they finish their formal education training in the field itself so we're, we're not limiting what post-secondary career and technical education can be but um how that this can be aligned according to the end product the end goal the student's career pathway the learner's pathway um so that's kind of the overall, you know, in a specific way of what we're doing. But then when we think about every career, every every um, type of training, every type of education, we in our culture and our study leads to a career, or hopefully. Um, I'm sure if you have children in school, you want them, no matter even if they're in second grade, you know, you're hoping that they go on to school, they go on to school, they go on to school, and they're learning what they need to learn so that one day they can go to work. Uh, I don't think that very many of us, we may not think about it as much when they're in elementary school, but none of us think, okay, I want my kids to go to school and be educated just for the sake of being educated. I mean, which is important, but but that's just not the way we usually are thinking. I, I want my kids to be educated, be educated, but I want them to be able to do something, to find um, a you know a family supporting wage earning job to contribute to society, to find a way to uh, help better humanity you know and hopefully that will be a way that they can also take care of themselves and whoever else they bring in bring into their family okay so um the course itself as i said the the overall thought is that we're going to hopefully be able to think through how how this curriculum design works for any particular career pathway so we have to be very broad we can't think of just one thing like um especially in me in, in working with you all. I can't just think of one particular area. Even though I'm a teacher, I can't think of everyone going through teacher training. So I have to be much more broad with that. So to help you, um, I think it would be easier to think about if you had to train someone, it, especially if you're not a traditional teacher. So let's say you're not a career technical instructor. You are not, let's say you are um, and I'm using examples from last semester, so I hope anyone, nobody will be offended by that. But let's say that you are um, a court reporter. And so how can you use this course, how can you think through, how can you complete the assignments for this course when your current job is a court reporter and you're not a um, welding instructor? Because to me, if you are a welding instructor or you're a cosmetology instructor or you are a teacher educator like myself then I can really you know pull apart and use my state provided curriculum that I'm supposed to follow to complete assignments but when we get outside of that those of you who are outside of that that bubble that area it's okay like I know that you know and you have the knowledge 
to be able to complete these. It's just my job, hopefully, to help you figure out how this applies to you. So in my attempts of that, thank you for your patience. We're 10 minutes in. I realized that now. I just looked. Um, so I think it would be easier if you think about your current position and think about if you had to train someone, let's say you're promoted or you're going to be out for a little while, and you're going to have to train someone to do your job. That might be the easiest way to focus on a curriculum for you to develop. So if you had to think about what does your job consist of, how would you go about training someone? And it may even be that in your current position, you do train people, that you do have the opportunity to work with others and lead in training. Uh, so I don't want to limit anyone in what this end product will be. I just want to help you all to think about it. Okay, so um, we've talked about the course description. You will see in the course shell that there are a battery of assignments and they take you, the participant, the course participant, through a complete curriculum development process from beginning to end. Um, at the e, uh, each of the assignments will generate a component of a finished curriculum model. So unlike other courses that you may be in, this course, while you will complete an assignment and you'll move to the next assignment, but then when you get on assignment three or four or whatever down the road, um, you may think of something that will change and reshape something that you already had submitted in assignment one. And you, maybe you made a you know perfect score. Let's say you made 100 on that assignment because you did what was asked of you. But then as the curriculum changed, as your thoughts changed, as you grew in the process, that causes a change sometimes back in a different assignment. Okay, so... If you run upon that, you don't have to come and like return that in, but you can make that adjustment and that change because you're going to have these assignments that you complete that are broken down pieces of putting curriculum together. And at the end, you will have the opportunity to bring it all back together. And hopefully that will help you and that will help me. Um, so you'll do the assignments. The first one is the process analysis. And all of this is in Blackboard for you. I'm just actually using the handout that you you have that you can print out to go over um, just to help to explain it. And this is as a whole. Uh, the second assignment is your content standards analysis. Then you'll do a task analysis. So like first you're going to be thinking about the first assignment requires you to um, use the textbook and read and understand and get a better understanding of the different types of um processes used for curriculum development. There are different um, different angles that people take and so we're going to, the book and the assignments ask you to look at what might be best for you and again thinking of training someone for your job or a current training type of work that you do. Um, then the second as I says, your content standards. So content standards are just like objectives. Those are like the, um, the way that we are able to verbalize what it is that we want someone to learn and so you have to where does that come from? Where do those content standards come from? And so lots of times it's industry standards that will lead that and guide that for us. And um, then it may be even state standards that are provided to you, or it could be just what's acceptable practice in your current position. The third assignment is your task analysis. And this is where the skills, you know, the tasks, what actually has to be done to do, to, to meet those content standards or to do the job. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking about if they have to complete a task, if they have to be able to do something, um, you may have to actually go back. This is usually what, what we recommend to do in a, if you're creating an evaluation or even um, if you're creating instructional guides or instructional sheets, is sometimes you have to do this, the steps yourself. Um, I'm getting ready to make, this is way off, but at the same time, I think that you'll see how it relates. Uh, I'm getting ready to make a huge pot of spaghetti. I'm, I am um, bribing my older kid and his friends to come and help put all of our Christmas stuff away, which is a lot of big tote containers and all this. So I told him, I said, hey, bring your friends over and I'll cook a big pot of spaghetti. Okay, so if I were to have to try to teach someone how to make spaghetti, I would have to think of all the steps. So sometimes it, it can be easier if you kind of walk through when you're doing a task analysis, do this, do whatever the thing is yourself and really write down what all you have to do. So, you know, it, it's one thing if you've made spaghetti a hundred times and I can say, well, you brown the ground beef and you um, boil the water and you do these things. But um, depending upon the background knowledge, what the person I'm trying to explain, uh, if they've never been in the kitchen before, if it's a, you know, six-year-old that 
I don't want them to get close to a fight, you know, the heat, whatever it may be, it would change the directions. Um, I might have to be more detailed or less detailed depending upon who my targeted learner and learner is, which is one of the other assignments that you'll be doing is talking about the learner. That plays so much a part in all of this, knowing your learner, who is, who is the audience, who is my person that I'm hoping to to teach this skill to or to teach this behavior to or this activity to. So that's it all kind of works together. And that's why I said other things shape other things. Like you may write out a task analysis and then when you go back and you go, wait a minute, it's different learners. These tasks are not necessary because this learner already has this skill set. So I'm talking to seasoned chefs who, yeah, if I say brown some ground beef, I don't have to tell them which pot or pan to use, what utensil to use, what brown means. I don't have to go into definitions. I don't have to tell them how to season beef when you're cooking it. None of that because that person, the learner, would already know that. So that's why the learner analysis is important. Um, then the assignment four is your goals, outcomes, and objectives. So this you're going to use more like a chart to turn in, and you'll always be referring back to like your content standards. So you're gonna connect content standards with goals and outcomes. So what does that look like? Again, what is the end product? But you'll get more information as you go in. Assignment five is a content development and uh, unit development. So how do you chunk all this information? How do you decide, well, we're gonna, today I'm gonna teach you everything there is to know to be able to Whatever, fill in the blank. Again, I, I should probably myself, before I sit down to do a video like this, I should go ahead and decide what my whatever is just so I make more sense. But hopefully you you are following my rabbit trails. I know I get like, yeah, I talk about this, I talk about this. So just bear with me. Um, so that's assignment five. And, and each of these assignments are within modules in Blackboard. So the module provides you with the required reading, supplemental reading, supplemental videos, supplemental web links, uh, hopefully information, that's the purpose, information has been gathered and put into module units, that's how the whole unit development, for you to help assist you in this process. Assignment six is your instructional strategies. Okay, so now we know all we want everybody to learn, whoever these people are, we know why we want them to learn it, we know how they're going to learn it, as far as like the, um, the overall process, but how are we going to teach it? What, what strategies? Uh, are we going to make everyone come in and sit down at a big conference table and just watch as I use a PowerPoint slide and, and point and talk and direct? Or are they going to have to do hands-on activities? Are you going to lead them and guide them? Is it going to be one-on-one? Um, -on -one? Is it going to be that um, you will model for them? They will be allowed to watch you for several days and then they have to do it themselves. So these are, this is where you will talk about um, how, like the strategies. So other, other suggestions that are given for you is self-paced learning. You know, maybe it's an online type process that they'll go through. Projects, you'll have them do projects. Group work, written work, computer-based instruction. So there's lots of different methods that will be used um, for, depending upon what your particular curriculum that you're developing. So that's where we come up with our strategies. And then the very last assignment that's due in this course is called just your curriculum project. This is where you're going to assimilate the completed products for this course into one document, one PowerPoint, one something, one, one way to present it. You know, it can all be in just one Word document. That's fine with me, as long as it's outlined and it makes sense. Then, woo, then you get to experience what I'm doing right now. You get to make a video for me. You can use um, Camtasia, which just more videos your your computer screen. You can do a YouTube video like I'm doing now where I just use the video function on my camera and then um, my my younger son tells me that I need to edit. He's like, mom, you really need to edit this. You could take a lot out. Yes, I probably could, but I'm not real good at that and I know how he's taught me. He is, by the way, in the fourth grade, but he's taught me how to use uh, iMovie to edit some, uh, but it Usually I just don't take the time to do it. But anyway, I may have to today because I'm getting lengthy. So um, you can use whatever mode you want to, but you're going to do a video to turn in with this. Uh, then there's also discussion boards that are they're going along um, 
in line with the other assignments of the course and they're all building again into this curriculum so the first one is instructional context analysis the second one is curriculum rationale like why what are we identifying to be our curriculum your learner analysis is your third one and your fourth is evaluation and assessment so all of these assignments discussion boards and assignments are to be completed with the idea that you have chosen a specific something to teach to someone either teaching your current job or a part of your job I mean it doesn't even have to be the whole thing so you don't have to come up with like a, a full broad semester long curriculum for a course but you do have to narrow it down and, and let me know what it is that you plan to teach to someone through you know through this curriculum process and, and this is what will guide you through the assignments. Okay, I am at 20 minutes and 40 something seconds. I don't even know this will, if this will load. I hope so. And I hope this has been somewhat informative to you. Thank you all for your patience. And I look forward to working with you this semester. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.